In this color grading tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how you can create this clean and modern wedding style look in your photos just using Lightroom Classic. And I'm gonna start right now. Right guys, so the very first thing you want to do is go ahead and choose a photo. Now I'm choosing this photo here, which is of a recent wedding. Now, what I really like about this specific preset and look overall is it's quite neutral. So you can apply it to almost all types of photos. Now, if a client comes to me um, and they're not too particular on a certain look, so they don't wanna go for a moody look or a warm look or a cool look, then usually this is the, the specific preset that I use simply because it's quite neutral. It's fairly true to life. There isn't too much change changes when it comes to overall color, but I increase the saturation, contrast, and overall it's, looked, it's a really pleasing look. So it's a nice, modern, classic, easy to use, simple preset. Right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up uh, the photo, we're gonna go over to the develop panel inside Lightroom Classic, and first what we're gonna do is drop down to the basics panel. Now inside here, you can see we've got our white balance, we've got our temperature and tint. First thing we're gonna do though is change the profile. So we're gonna go from Adobe Color, and because we're working uh, with people, I like changing it to Adobe Portrait. It doesn't make a very large change, but it's just something I like doing. Okay, so let's go to the white balance first. Now, I shot this at 57,000 Kelvin, in camera, I always shoot on manual just because, or manual white balance, just because you get more consistent colors when you're creating an overall gallery. But what I'm gonna do in this particular case, let's go to that temperature there. I'm gonna go ahead and increase it to 6,000 Kelvin, and I'm gonna leave the tint alone as I think it is fairly, or I think it is right for this specific photo, but you may want to change it on yours if it's a bit too green or a bit too magenta. So first thing we do is gonna to go to the exposure here. I'm gonna go ahead and increase that by 0.8 of a stop. So we're gonna go overall increase the brightness of the photo. I find sometimes, especially when I'm shooting, just evaluating metering, sometimes the photo is a little bit dark, especially if shooting outside. So overall, just bringing up the exposure balances that out a little bit. Then we're gonna to go to the contrast here. I'm gonna go ahead and increase that by 20. Then to kind of bring back some of that highlight information that you can see in the highlights, we're gonna go ahead and bring our highlights down. I'm gonna bring it down by around about minus 70. And for the shame, for the shadows, we're gonna bring that up. We're gonna increase that by 50. And you can see we're bringing up a little bit more information in the suit that you can see here, and then a little bit in the shadows in the background. Now, to make it not look matty, because sometimes if you increase the shadows too far, it creates this matte look, which we're not going for in this specific style. We're gonna go ahead at 10%, in the brights, and we're gonna go for the blacks here, we're gonna go minus 10%. What that'll do is it'll just prevent the, you know, that matte look appearing in the highlights and shadows, so there's no grayish tones. We've got some true black and true white within our image. Now in texture here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase that by 10. Now with all kind of portrait photos in general and some landscape photos, I like actually reducing the clarity. Not by much, but just enough to make it look a little bit softer, especially when it comes to the skin tones. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop that down by minus 10. And then for dehaze, I'm simply just going to add five to the photo. Just for this specific example, just because we've got a little bit of smoke and that will add a little bit more contrast to that smoke if we add a little bit of of the haze. Okay, so we'll do turn off the basics panel. We're going to skip out the tone curve in this particular example. I'm going to go ahead and open up HSL. Now, HSL controls your hue, your saturation, and luminance. So basically, it's the type of color, the amount of color, and the brightness of that color. And it's broken up into color bands, as you can see, red all the way down to magenta. So what we're gonna do is go open open up the hue first, start off with red, and we're gonna go down and drop down to red and drop that down to minus five. That'll add a little bit more magenta into those skin tones. Then we've got the orange here. We're gonna go for a little bit more of a change, so we we'll are go for minus 15. So again, we're just fixing those skin tones a little bit. They looked a little bit too yellow, so we have to basically adding a little bit more red to that orange, which is predominantly found in the skin tones. And we'll do the same with the yellow. We've got to drop that down by minus 15, and it's the same situation with the green. So we're gonna go for minus 15 there. Now we're not gonna do anything else, because again, like I was saying, it's a very classic look, it's a very modern look. So we're going for a nice, clean, fairly true to life image. We're just fixing some skin tone issues that can be found. So what we're gonna do is, again, leave saturation alone, we're not gonna do much changes, 
Well, we are gonna change two things in the luminance panel. So what we're gonna do is gonna go to the yellow here and we're gonna increase that to by 30. What that will do is it will, mostly the foliage, it will brighten it up a little bit because sometimes it can look quite dark, especially if you're shooting into the shade. And it's the same situation with the green. So we're gonna increase that by 30. Now, if you can see, if I just increase or decrease it, you can see that's specifically targeting the grass. So I like the grass to be a little bit brighter with this look. Again, go for that nice bright look. We're not trying to make the photo look moody in any way or contrasty or too contrasty. We're going for that nice, clean, true to life image. Okay, so that's all we're gonna do in HSL. Again, like I was saying, we're not gonna do much in that particular one. So what we're gonna do now is just simply drop down to detail. Now, if we go ahead and zoom in, you can see that I shot this at particular image at 320 ISO. So there's almost no grain to be seen, but there may be grain in your image. So what I recommend doing is going to our manual noise reduction. We're gonna to go to a luminance here. I'm gonna increase that by 25. What that will do is it'll just remove a little bit of that luminance ISO grain that you can see. And then we're going to do the same with color. And as you can see, when we turn that on, this turns on as well. So 25 for the top, 50 for detail, zero for contrast. And then for color is 25, detail is 50 and smoothness is 50. A lot of that is automatic. So all we need to do really do is just turn it on and we turned it to 25 there. Okay. So what we do is turn off a detail and we're gonna go over to lens correction. Now these two things, always make sure they're ticked, especially if you're shooting in RAW. That is remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. And as you can see, it's picked up the lens that I was using. It was the Sigma 35mm f1.4. Now the reason you wanna turn these on, sometimes lenses aren't perfectly optically performing. So the Sigma lens has a little bit of barrel distortion. So what that will do is it will, you're basically enabling the profile correction. It basically fixes what is wrong with that specific lens that you're using. And it's the same with an, uh, remove chromatic aberration. That's that fringing that you can see on sometimes high contrast edges. Basically just make sure they're always ticked. And again, if you do run into any problems, so if we uh, go ahead and zoom in really far, zoom into 800%, can you see just on the edge of his shirt here, it's got like a magenta hue. It's very, very difficult to see because I'm using quite expensive lenses. But what you can do if, you're, if it's a real problem for you is go into the manual setting, go to where you can see it says defringe, use the little eyedropper tool and you wanna hover over that exact area where you can see that fringing appearing. And if you go ahead and click, what Lightroom will do is it'll try and remove it. And it's done a really good job in this specific instance. So as you can see, it's worked quite nicely, but it's not necessarily a problem I'm really run into. I have to zoom into 800% to actually see it. So in this specific case, I wouldn't worry, but in your photo, if you're using maybe cheaper lenses or something like that, it may be a little bit more prominent within your image, but always make sure you go into lens correction and make sure it's all turned on and you're happy with the result. Okay, so what we're gonna do is go down now to effects. Now we're gonna do a small change in here. We're gonna go to our post cropping vignette. Now I like adding in a little bit of vignette to this image. Again, we're not going for a massive change. We're just making it look nice and modern. So I'm gonna go add in a little bit of a vignette here. I'm gonna go for minus 15. What that can do, especially if you're shooting for central point. So for instance, the bride and groom are in the middle of this image. We'll just, just draw a little bit more attention by removing some information or removing the brightness from the outside of the image. Again, a very subtle shame, but it does work in a lot of cases. Okay. So we're gonna turn off the effects and the last thing we we'll do is gonna go into the calibration tool. Now I love the calibration tool. The opportunities and the amount of stuff that you can do with it is amazing. If you want to learn more, go ahead and watch this video here. It's my masterclass. But what we're gonna do in this specific video is we're just gonna affect the saturation of the red, green and blue primaries. So we're gonna go to the red first, we're gonna go to the saturation. We're gonna go ahead and increase that by 15. We're gonna go to the green here as well. We're gonna increase that by 15. And then we're gonna go to the blue here as well. We're gonna increase that by 15 across the board. In this specific video, all it's going to do is just increase the saturation of each three of the primary colors which again is a global change because every single color has a section of red, green, and blue in it. Again, if you'd like to learn more, I have got that masterclass available. I'll make sure to put that into the link in the description. Okay, so as you can see, we're pretty much done. Now what you want to do, or depending on how bright or how dark you were shooting, you might wanna go back to the basics panel. You might wanna go to your exposure here and you might wanna increase or decrease the photo. I'm actually quite happy around minus or plus 0.8, 
but you might find your photos a bit too dark or a bit too strong, but all you'll need to do is simply change the exposure. Now, another thing I like doing is actually using masks. So what I'm gonna quickly show you, so I'm gonna go over to my masks panel. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually select the subject. So I'm gonna go ahead and select subject like so. As you can see, it's pretty much selected the bride and groom and also the bridesmaids. What I'm gonna do is just add a slight pop of color to bring them out a little bit versus the background. So what I'm gonna do is go to my exposure here. I'm gonna literally increase that ever so slightly. So 0 0.025 of a stop, maybe 0 0.02 actually instead. Uh, and that's pretty much all I'm going to do with this image. So what I can do now is show you the before and I can show you the after. And what I'll do is I'll show you the rest of the gallery. And as you can see, it's a real nice, clean look. Again, it's very true to life. It's just a very, just universal look. It just makes your photos pop a little bit more without adding a certain tone to it. So it doesn't make it look very warm or very cool. It's very true to life. And it's something that I really like. And a lot of my couples are really happy with this specific look. So remember, if you are really happy with it, make sure to go to your presets and make it as a preset. So then you can use it time again and again and again. Here is the before and here is the after. Well, thank you for sticking to the end of this video. I hope you found it helpful and informative. Now, of course, if you want to learn any more about Lightroom Classic, I've got my masterclass playlist just up here. Or if you're more interested in just learning how to color grade in different styles, then I've got my color grading playlist just up here. I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next time.